Hey, this is Jim Florentine, and you're on BackstageAccess.com, where the real show begins. Nice. Come on! Tell me about first time seeing Slipknot. I think it was it was on um, Ozfest, like 2003 or something like that, on a small stage. They headlined a small stage. I for first time I saw them was on Conan O'Brien when the first album came out. They were on there. I'm like, and I saw. I'm like, holy shit! And then they were on Ozfest a few weeks later, and that's when I get into them. And it's one of my favorite bands live. They're unbelievable. I've seen them probably 12 times. One thing about Corey Taylor, yeah, you can say that probably people out there don't know. He's got a really big penis. Something else maybe that the guys might want to hear? Right. Uh, Corey, one of the nicest guys in the business. Um, you know, just super dude. My nephew's 14 years old. I bring him to Slipknot shows. He, he made, he told, um, brought my nephew on stage. He said, I want you to watch the opening two songs from the side of the stage. You know, he's like, make sure. And he went to his assistant, make sure he's hooked up and all this stuff. But just super, one of the nicest guys in the business. Good to see you, brother. What's, what's going on? Tell us about the first time we're here at the roast. Corey Taylor, you've done a couple of these roasts. Your relationship with Corey, how far back does it go? Well, my relationship with Corey really started out badly for Corey. Because Slipknot um, played Madison Square Garden for the first time about, I think about four years ago. And uh, they had an after party inside the garden. There's a bar like in the middle of the garden. And they were so jacked up to be playing Madison Square Garden for the first time, headlining Madison Square Garden. And they were having this big party afterwards to celebrate. And I think I, if I mix peanuts and red wine, it creates really noxious fumes <laughs> that emanate from my butt. And I basically stunk out like 200 people from the after party. And Corey walked in like, with his hands above his head, like, I just fucking crushed Madison Square Garden. Oh, it smells like beer and shit in here. And he left, and I ruined the whole after party for him. He never came back. So that's that's how we our friendship started. Oh, that's, you know, I'm sure you guys are best friends since then. <laughs> actually, actually, I was just hanging with him backstage, and he's like, he goes, don't pull that stuff out on stage. It's, he goes, I'm nervous enough, so. Uh, okay, the first time you ever seen Slipknot in concert, Tell me about that experience. So I'm uh, first time on an Ozfest. They were, uh, I think they're headlining the small stage. And it was, you know, three in the afternoon. It was 100 degrees out. The stage was on asphalt. And they just came out. And it was, it was like, it's like watching the end of the world live. I mean, I could not believe the energy and the intensity that was coming off that stage. And I mean, and, it, and Hatebreed had just crushed the stage and then Slipknot comes on, takes it to another level. And uh, I've probably seen him a dozen times since. I've seen him at Donington and every, I, every time I see him, it's just like, no band can go after this. You know what I mean? It's like, I, it's like me going on after Chris Rock. I'm like, you just destroyed the audience for an hour. I, I'm going home. Sebastian Bach here. He's going to be the roast master tonight for Corey Taylor. Yeah. Tell us about the first time you met Corey, that experience. Oh, wow, that's, that's wild. Well, you know, the first time I met him, I knew him from Slipknot, so I didn't know what he looked like, the way he looks. So I was at the Rainbow, and there was this crazy fucking guy like this. like, And I, go, I didn't know that was Corey. And... <laughs> I was pretty fucked up. He was pretty fucked up. And I left, and he kept staring at me like this, like, and then I, got, I remember getting in the car. I go, who the fuck is that weird guy? And then, he, and, then he, and then I met him. He goes, dude, that night at the Rainbow, you wouldn't even talk to me, man. He's like, I've been listening to your shit for years, and you didn't even fuck. I go, dude, I didn't. I only know you with a rubber mask on your face. I, I don't know what you look like. <laughs> so that was the first time I met him. We're here at the Rose on a Range with the lovely couple, Scott and Pearl. How you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, how you doing? I have to ask both of you guys the first time they each met Corey and your relationship with him now. First time I met him was in December of 99. Uh, Anthrax and Slipknot played a show together in Boston. And uh, we were fast friends. We hit it off like 
pretty quickly and stayed in touch after that and uh, quickly became more than just like, hey, what's up, band friends, and actually became friends outside of being in bands. Earl? I think I met Corey in like two, I don't know, 14 years ago, yeah, something like that, at the House of Blues in, in L.A., just because Scott knew him and... Tell, tell us about one thing the people out there don't know about Corey. They, they, you know, obviously he's the guy behind Stone Sour and Slipknot, but some, something out there that maybe people don't know about Corey. I don't know if you've read his books. I don't know. There's not, he's put it all in there. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he doesn't, doesn't have hold, much to hide. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you don't know him, maybe you'd think he's like a lunatic or something, but he's, he's a pretty down-to-earth dude. I have to ask you this because obviously we know each other from the Kiss Cruise and you got somewhat in trouble and I want you to tell the fans out there what kind of hat because I think it's hilarious. I'm surprised anybody took this seriously, <laughs> but there's a girl on the Kiss Cruise who is the cruise director. She's really peppy. She's like the Julie McCoy of the Kiss Cruise. And she asked me, she said, hey, do you want to make a funny announcement tomorrow morning that for the whole cruise? Because she does these morning announcements every morning. And I said, fuck yeah. So I went down to make the announcement. And when I got there, I said, just do your announcements and say, plus we have two special guests here. So she made her announcements. And she said, oh, and we have two special guests that want to say hello. And I grabbed the mic and I went, hey, guys, this is Paul Stanley. And this is Gene Simmons from KISS. And... We have a problem on the KISS cruise. Don't panic, but we have a problem with the ship. It seems that the ship has just hit an iceberg. Now, keep in mind, when I say we've hit an iceberg, we're in the middle of the Bahamas. There's no reason for you to think that we actually are in trouble and that we've hit an iceberg. And I said, but don't worry, because KISS is going to take care of you. We actually have three packages to get you off the ship. We have the platinum package, which is we put you in a life raft and you have your own private photo taken with kids. And then we have the diamond package, which is we throw you in the ocean, and then Kiss floats by on a raft, and we play a private acoustic show. It was all stupid shit, but apparently two or three of the passengers on the ship actually ran to the employees and said, is Kiss going to fucking charge us to get off the boat? They really thought that we had hit an iceberg and that Kiss was going to charge everyone to get off. So... I haven't heard from Kiss since then, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but um, but I'm surprised people took it seriously. It was a really silly thing. Like I'm gonna say shit here tonight that is like it's not how I feel. I'm not racist <laughs> today, <laughs> but it's just this is where you go to be really inappropriate. This is where you go. So we'll see how it goes. Craig Corey Taylor, first time you ever met him. Oh, wow. Probably back in 99. Um, before we went on Tattoo the Earth, I was in touch with Paul and Joey and Clown, and they were at one of our shows, and I gave them, like, the Hatebreed first album, and they gave me the first Slipknot cassette single. And I was like, this is going to be huge. And when it's huge, you got to take us on tour. And they did. They actually blew up huge and took us on tour all over the world. We did Tattoo the Earth, OzFest 2001, OzFest 2002, OzFest 2004, all with Slipknot. Then they took us on the Unholy Alliance with Slipknot and Slayer. I mean, I probably owe my entire career to Corey and Clown and Joey and Paul, rest in peace, and the rest of the Slipknot guys. Corey Taylor, first time you guys ever seen Slipknot? Uh, Probably five years ago. Uh, I did Mayhem with them uh, three years ago. Uh, I've seen him a few times. I think about six years first time. Obviously, lots on Mayhem with him. Uh, but about six years ago first time. Yeah. Uh, download 08. When you guys seen Corey Taylor or Slipknot for the first time, what did you guys think immediately? I don't know. I thought it was like, I mean, super wild. Just those like, you know, all those dudes like just raging on stage. Really wild. And he's an incredible singer, too. Yeah, he's, a, he's an amazing singer, obviously, you know. And those tunes, you know, I mean, when Iowa came out, that was pretty groundbreaking for, for us, you know. You see, God damn, I want to pound a bunch of booze right now. It's always an incredible experience. Um, I mean, I, I grew up on Corey's music, and then over the years getting to know him, and it's been, it's 
been an incredible time. I'm very happy to be here this evening. I pretty much just wanted to start beating people up the first time I saw them. So it was uh, it was pretty awesome. A lot of a lot of aggression. And, you, know. you guys are actually playing the festival. Is this the first time playing the festival? I believe this is, this is going to be our first show ever. Ever with this first yeah. show. This is. Uh, this is this is a new a new, a new band uh, that we've I mean we've spent the last three years putting it together while we've all been doing our other things and this is gonna be our first time playing on stage all together so it's gonna be a very fun experience. Small. Yeah. yeah, first show rock on the range. I mean that's you're starting out pretty strong, right? Yeah, we released uh, actually released the first single yesterday and the response has been phenomenal. Um, nothing but praise. It's been it's gone down well. It's, I'm glad we can save rock and roll. Yeah, everybody can just start thanking us now. I mean, I don't know, is, there, is this the thank you line over here? Uh, the single just came out yesterday, but it, it, to, it tore up their airways. I don't know if you heard it or not. A song called Denial, yeah, on uh, Roadrunner Records. So, uh, so we, with, judging by that response, I think we're going to be all right. We were a little worried that maybe uh, maybe nobody would be there for us, but I think we're going to be all right. No, pretty young. Yeah, I want to stop in the